will be considered as read. The gentleman is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment strikes Title I, II, and III and replaces them with a requirement that the Postal Regulatory Commission examine and consider recalibrating the rate at which the Postal Service prefunds its retirement health benefits for current employees. This is separate from the issue we discussed and debated a little earlier. This one doesn't involve competing GAO estimates. This is something we actually did in the 2006 legislation here in Congress. As a result of the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act of 2006, the Postal Service is the only entity, public or private, which is required to prefund pre -fund its anticipated retirement pension and health costs at 100 percent. That is far more than the industry norm, which we like to cite as a model of between 67 and 80 percent for public entities and is particularly unnecessary in light of the rapidly shrinking postal workforce. This requirement is the primary reason for the Postal Service's pending technical default. But for the prefunding requirement, the Postal Service would have been in the black since 2006 instead of losing a cumulative $22 billion. That is not to deny there are changes, obviously, in mail service. And as you pointed out earlier, Mr. Chairman, Obviously, the email, uh, email uh, is having an impact on, on the Postal Service, but it is a separate issue. This amendment would direct the Postal Regulatory Commission to recalculate the retirement prefunding rate based on industry best practices and expected changes to the Postal Service workforce. According to the Fitch Rating Service, government default rates nationwide are less than 0.03 percent, far lower than the private default rate of 10 percent. By aligning retirement prefunding requirements with the same best practices that have protected solvency of other governmental entities, we can also protect the Postal Service retirement savings without driving it into bankruptcy through excessive payment requirements. It would buy the Postal Service time to complete more far-reaching changes to its business model, including strategic co-location with public and private sector entities, maximizing revenue from parcel shipments associated with Internet commerce vote by mail, advertising changes, and new retail activities with existing private sector companies in collaboration. Uh, in conjunction with the 90-day extension bill introduced by Mr. Cummings, Mr. Lynch, myself, and others, this amendment, I think, would buy us some time to fashion that new viable business model for the 21st century. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. I recognize myself in opposition to this amendment. Mr. Connolly, you represent too many Federal workers not to know better. This, this amendment of yours guts the bill, strikes all of the reforms, and puts $100 billion on the backs of the American people if enacted. I know that the popular buzzword on both sides uh, of, of Capitol Hill has been, well, this, we're the only agency that has to prefund. With all due respect, this is the only agency that gets to set its own fees and collect the money necessary to meet that funding. What I think is not said enough around here to pass the Federal Beltway to the American people is, in fact, Social Security has an obligation to be fully prefunded. We are prefunding our own retirement as individual citizens. Yes, the Federal Government, in fact, should have a line item for every part of the FERS liability. But ultimately, for everybody virtually except the post office, that would simply mean that we would put money in and then immediately put it back into Treasury bills. The difference is it is not general revenue that pays for the retirement of our postal workers. Now, I want to take exception specifically to one thing you said, that somehow because the post office is shrinking, this is less necessary. It is just the opposite. If the post office were growing, growth covers many ills. A larger post office in the future would be able to have more and more people to defray the cost of catch-up for people on retirement who had not been fully funded. That is not the case. As we go from 600,000 employees to probably 300,000 employees, 300, employees a decade from now, it will be on the backs of their work and the, uh, the remaining people using postal. So I could not disagree with this more. This strips away any reform, including the reforms agreed to uh, with our counterparts in the Senate, as necessary. I urge the opposition to this. 
as not a sensible reform and yield back. I recognize the gentleman from uh, Maryland, the ranking member. Thank you very much. I would yield to Mr. Connolly to respond to uh, the, the uh, Chairman's uh, comments. I thank the ranking member. Um, I wish I could say I even appreciated the comments of the Chairman in response to my amendment. I guess some of us get under his skin more than others. Um, certainly lecturing me about I should know better in my district, frankly, is gratuitous. Um, we can deal with the merits of the amendment. The fact of the matter is no other agency is required to have 100 percent prepayment. That is a fact. And the only reason the Postal Service does is because of 2006 legislation that was generated by the United States Congress. And I am simply saying let us encourage the Postal Regulatory Commission, which, of course, the Chairman's bill would gut and essentially take away powers to oversee. Uh, because sometimes they come up, apparently, with recommendations with which we don't agree. But I would empower them to recalibrate what is a reasonable rate. If they want to come back and say, no, 100 percent is reasonable, then so be it. But I don't think the chairman of this committee or even this committee ought to substitute itself for a, a robust, rigorous analysis of what makes sense. I do contend 100 percent arbitrarily put in that legislation in 2006 a requirement no other agency has to meet and, and does not meet private sector standards um, is unreasonable and puts an undue financial burden on the Postal Service. And so my simple amendment, yes, would change that and would actually, instead of our substituting our whimsical judgment on this matter, would actually put it in the hands of rigorous analysis by which we would abide. And with that, I yield back to the uh, ranking member. Can I, can the gentleman yield? I would yield to the gentleman.